turn the lights off in this place And she shines just like a star And I swear I know her face I just don't know who you are Turn the music up in here I still hear her loud and clear Like she's right there in my ear Telling me that she wants to own me To control me Come closer Come closer And I just can't hold much time for weeks No matter how bad I can't make I just can't stop <clears throat> Hello, cool people on the internet. You are now tuned in with your host with the most, Deep Cut Donnie. Like I said last podcast, this last weekend I made me a trip down to Georgia, stayed with my brother for a minute, and I got a ton of good stuff to talk about, like fighting out of this corner, sugar, Sean O'Moochie. My boy, Sugar Sean O'Malley. Stepped up and dude, it was a dog fight, okay? Respect to the boy Peter Yawn. Respect. But he's no Sean O'Malley, dude. Dude, Sean O'Malley got hit in that second round and he was seeing stars. I thought he was done and I was sweaty. But he pulled it out. He won. And it was a glorious day. We got deep ties with Sean O'Malley around here, dude. Deep freaking ties, all right? I knew there was no chance he was going to lose that fight. I told you last episode, Sean O'Malley, bet your savings that he's going to win. I thought it was going to be a first-round knockout, just something spectacular. But he won regardless. Sugar Show, forever undefeated, dude. I couldn't be more happy. It was a heck of a UFC watch. It was like in Abu Dhabi, so it was like at 9 in the morning. Listen to me. Last Saturday, hear this. We woke up at 4.45 in the morning, started off real hot, watching the Perth Wildcats. You hear me? Brady Manick was out there hitting step backs, step bite, step and bite. You hear me? 4.45 to catch a 5 a.m. game. Then UFC prelims start at 9 a.m. Okay? Sugar Sean around lunchtime, like 2 p.m. So we're just, you know, we've been going for six, seven hours at that point, and this just at the apex, dude. I'm surprised we didn't just burn Corey's little backyard to the ground. Tremendous. We fired up cigars. We were in there, in there. I brought my Sugar Show Sean O'Malley card, freaking card, and I was rubbing on it like this for good luck for the voodoo. And it turned out, man, it showed up. Freaking Sean O'Malley owes us one. A tremendous time in Georgia. And let me tell you this. Something with my brother Corey. I don't know why or how it even got to this point, but it's like a spiritual event watching Lord of the Rings with us. We watched all three Lord of the Rings in a two-day span. The one day we watched one and two, and then the other day we watched the third one. I may have fallen asleep at a point or two, and he fell asleep during a point or two, but that doesn't matter. What matters is, on the second day, we're watching Lord of the Rings Return of the King, okay? Bear with me. I'm a, I'm a grown man, and I find myself piled up on a couch holding my knees crying watching a movie that I've seen a hundred plus times I cried I'm not just saying this for like something to talk about this is you know whatever it's just something to talk about it's embarrassing but there's something to this I freaking cried watching Lord of the Rings the other day incredible 
freaking incredible, dude. Reasons. Intro. All right, we'll start with the intro. Fellowship of the Ring. I'm doing a dive right now. Fellowship of the Ring. It intros. Frodo sitting there in the grass reading the book. And the extended version goes into an extended explanation of who the Hobbit people are, the Shire, what it is, what they're like. It goes into a more elaborate transcription of the moral compass of these people. Tremendous people of the Shire. I'm getting emotional. The extended version just nails it, dude. I don't know why. It's kind of like Apocalypse Now. The extended version of Apocalypse Now. Why wasn't that just the regular freaking version? Same thing with the extended version of Fellowship of the Ring. Why wouldn't it just... It's already three hours long. Just make it 320 and just be fine with it. Who cares? It's a long movie. So what? The Godfather was long. Anywho. Getting emotional. The nostalgic Hobbit scene. Extended. It's right there at the start. You don't even have to fast forward nothing. Just watch the extended version. And pay attention. Don't be on Snapchat. And don't check Instagram. Actually dive into this and see what these people are trying to do on the freaking motion picture. Second reason I love Lord of the Rings. Merry and Pippin. Okay? Merry and Pippin. The songs. You can search far and wide. You can drink the whole town dry. Their friendship is awesome. I follow both of the actors on Instagram and they have a podcast together called The Friendship Onion. They're actual like 40 year friends. These actors. Incredible dude. Merry and Pippin. Oh my god. If you haven't seen Lord of the Rings just too bad dude. Don't watch this episode or you're just a mush and a half because they're like 20 years old. you never seen freaking Lord of the Rings. Get out of here dude. There's a scene. With Merry and Pippin, dude. Tremendous. Fantastic motion picture. Merry is laying there in a battlefield. He's all jacked up. Looks like he got kicked by a mule. He's just laying there. There's a huge battlefield. And I know it's a movie. Whatever. Pippin finds him. His best friend. He finds his best friend on the battlefield. He goes up to him and shakes him. Merry's eyes open up. And he's all crusty and jacked up. And he's, the first thing he said, he said, I knew you would find me. Freak yeah, dude. I knew you'd find me. He said, are you going to leave me? And Pippin, with tears in his eyes, said, no, Mary. I'm going to look after you. Woo! Yeah! Freaking Mary and Pippin, dude. Another reason to love Lord of the Rings. Obviously, Frodo and Sam. Tremendous friendship. Fantastic. And the end of the first freaking movie. Sam swims out to the boat and almost drowns. And the third one, he fights a freaking spider. The lines. The acting and the freaking lines. Listen to this. Both of these are in the third. They're going up the freaking volcano. It's home stretch. Clutch. Fourth quarter. Two minute drill. Tom Brady. Kobe. This is it. This is clutch. Frodo and Sam going up the freaking volcano. And they're passed out, dehydrated. He said he didn't remember what it felt like to touch grass or the sound of water. He forgot the sound of water. They're struggling on a volcano. And Samwise Gamgee, dude. Samwise freaky Gamgee. He said, I can't carry the ring, but I can carry you. He just musters it up, son. Throws old Frodo on his back and marches up that freaking mountain. After it's all been done, after they throw the ring in the thing, and it's all blown up they think they're gonna die they know they're about to die 
and they're all crying, thinking about the Shire and what strawberries used to taste like and the cream and the barley or whatever Sam's talking about. And then he brings up the lady. When Sam brings up the lady and says, it would have been her and starts freaking crying, dude, jerks me around. I want to just kick some furniture around. Mm, beautiful freaking motion picture. And the last, this is where I cried. The, it's at the end, very end. Return of the King is by far the best one, okay? One is needed. Two is somewhat needed. Three is just... <clears throat> Barry Bonds knocking it out of the freaking park and into the water. There's people in paddle boats trying to go get that ball. They freaking knocked it <clears throat> out of the park, dude. Return of the King, you kidding me? I cried after they put the crown on Aragon. And he's sitting there and we're walking through the people. He sees Liv Tyler, who's wicked freaking hot. Oh, oh, wicked hot. Freaking Liv Tyler, dude. Wicked hot. Anywho, they put the crown on Aragon. He's walking through the thing, sees Liv Tyler, wicked hot, and continues walking along. He sees. The Four Hobbits, who I just went on the tangent rant about. He sees these guys and they bow down and he says, My friends, you bow to no one. The king bows down and Wicked Heart bows down and the people follow. Everyone bows down to the Shire people. Freaking, freaking Wicked Heart. All right, enough Lord of the Rings. I'm sorry. I, I blacked out. I can't feel my toes. I just took you deep into Lord of the Rings. I'm sorry. Moving on. While in Georgia. Perfect timing, dude. Sean O'Malley fight. And then Sunday comes around. The season finale of House of Dragons, baby. I wasn't fully sold. And you know, I'm still not fully sold. I'm like 80%, 82% sold. It's solid. Okay? It's solid. If you haven't watched House of Dragons, give it a shot. A little slow, but so was Game of Thrones. You didn't even know the freaking White Walkers existed till like season freaking three or four. So I am giving it a good shot. And the last episode was freaking nice, man. It gave me what I wanted. I'm not going to give any spoilers for the House of Dragons. But uh, I wanted a dragon fight. That's what I wanted. It's called House of the Freaking Dragons, you know? You want some dragons in there doing something. Something nice. I'm not going to say weak and you know it. You want some dragons in there doing something. And they gave me the freaking dragon. So I can't be mad. I'm not mad. I like it. But the only thing I don't like is when I get wrapped up in a thing and it's over. And it's not over, you know? Like I have to wait for season two, like two years. I'm going to forget names and plots. I'm going to have to rewatch all this crap in two years when the second season comes out. That's the only downer, I think. Yeah, like if I have more episodes to go, maybe there's some potential for that 82 to bump up to something. But enjoyable more enjoyable than the other crap I consume on a daily basis I like House of Dragons moving on okay I hardly ever eat breakfast but for whatever reason when I was in Georgia I was just really hankering for a breakfast so we went down the corner to Cracker Barrel I like me some Cracker Barrel they got good coffee you know, whatever, grandma sample or something, whatever. I like it. Salted ham, nice. Nice. Anywho, we walk into Cracker Barrel. I like the little shop, too. They got little basketball cards. They got little vinyl records. I fit in there. I don't know. They got some nice things. I'm looking around, poking around in the line, waiting to tell them that 
you know, it's just me and him, party of two, whatever. I'm standing there looking over here at the candy, and this lady just cuts me off in the line. I look at her. She has a Duke shirt on. I'm not making this up, folks. I wish I just took my phone out and took a picture, like a disrespectful picture right of her, right in front of her freaking face. Probably like Nancy or something. Nancy or, uh, I don't know, like a Ellen. Ellen, Eleanor, something. Something like this. She had like red, big, puffy, curly hair. Like the mom on Home Alone. Like it had a huge freaking like a swirl wave on it. The horrible hairdo is neither here nor there. So she has a Duke shirt on. Okay. Let's call her Ellen. So Ellen has a black shirt. Has a big freaking Duke logo. And she's just nudged in right in front of me. And you know the beauty of it. Right when we're about to step up, she looks, turns, looks at me. She says, oh, I'm sorry. Did I cut you? Like she didn't know what she was doing. A nasty, nasty. And I said, oh, yeah, but it's fine. You're a Duke fan. You need all the help you can get. And she started to chuckle like I was joking. She looked down. I was wearing my Carolina sweater. And the little chuckle went, Vroom. And she knew I wasn't playing. Lady needs freaking help. Needs some psychiatric treatment. Needs some Prozac or some of that stuff that I see to call your doctor and ask if you could, whatever, take a script for some of that crap home. I don't know, during the NFL, apparently a bunch of NFL fans need pills. That's all I see commercials for watching the NFL. But I bumped into a Duke fan and told her she needed help at Cracker Barrel. Nice. Speaking of Carolina, we're counting down upon a new season, embarking on a new journey. The unofficial season already kicked off. They had a secret scrimmage against Rutgers in which I heard the freshmen did really nice. I haven't seen a box score or anything, but uh, I like this freshman class for Carolina. Beautiful, dude. We got Washington, Trimble, Nickel. All of them have potential through the freaking roof ceiling. And I'm pumped about it, dude. We play an exhibition that's coming up Friday. And then, like, the season kicks off in like two weeks. But we can't get ahead of ourselves because UNC football is ranked and doing some damage. We're 6-1 and one right now. We had not been this good since like, I don't know, what was it, Mr. Trubisky's first year taking over when we had uh, like this, I know we lost to South Carolina, I think starting out the season, but then won like eight or nine in a row. I don't know, man. I'm no freaking historian. I just know that Drake May, Josh Downs, Caleb Hood, these guys are freaking taking over. And I like our defense. Dude, our defense is freaking wiki hot. I said it again. Going up against Pitt this Saturday, and I'm very confident that we're going to win like at least four out of the next five, not go undefeated. We might even beat Clemson. You know, whatever. Got to put the voodoo on it. Ooh. Ooh. Got to talk about this. It's my birthday today, and I did get some good presents. No disrespect. I love all my presents. Anything that anyone gets me is freaking awesome. The best present I received today is finding out the news that my coach, Hubert Davis, got a six-year extension. I, Dude, I don't care about the money. I don't want to even look in Hubert's pockets. I don't care. I know he's taken care of, dude. He played in the freaking NBA. He's the leader of the best basketball program in the freaking country. I don't care what he's making. I know he's fine. He's taken care of. I don't know why I'm so excited. Hubert freaking Davis. Six-year extension, baby. Oh! Freaking fire me up, dude. 
the best man in the country. Best freaking man in the country. My birthday. I'm 30 years old right now. I thank everybody who told me happy birthday, whether it's on Facebook. I've never been on Facebook in like 10 years, but I get on there to see who all said happy birthday. And uh, thankful for all those people, like some old teachers of mine reached out and stuff. I love that, man. I love talking to some of these people. Does my heart good. And the presents, dude. I got some sweaters, got some shirts. Um, and really today, for my birthday, I had to work a little bit, but I spent the rest of the time dyeing some more sweaters and stuff. Um, I'm really liking the coffee stain thing. If you haven't heard, a couple of weeks ago I started a clothing brand, clothing, whatever you want to call it www.coffeestainclothing.com and I like it dude I'm shipping people stuff I actually am legit now I got a shipping label printer so I'm not like writing it on there chicken scratch and it looks horrible my first little round of shirts I was sending out I was just writing it on there like Santa Claus and uh, throwing it down the chimney but now I have the thing and makes me look more official. Nice. Nice. Taking steps. Moving forward. The uh, Probably other than the Hubert Davis thing, the coolest thing is my mom just texted people and told them to send in videos like cameos for birthday stuff. And at first I was like, yo, what is this? But it's so funny, dude. I'm just going to give you a few of them right now. Here we go. What up, Scoochie Mane? Happy birthday! Uh, one on the lemon's birthday. Hi, Wen. Happy birthday, like a Wen. Have a big time, eat some cake, have good food. Hey, it's me. Heard it's a big day for a big old boy. Heard you're a 30 coach. 30 cooch. Yo, what up? I want to wish you a happy 30th birthday from Luke Skywalker, Red Stormtrooper, and Baby Yoda. Happy birthday. Happy May. Old son's getting up there. Got the coffee stain on. Uh, down under. The land down under. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. And 30 coots. Happy birthday to you. And 30 coots. Happy birthday to Wyatt. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Action McJackson, Miles, DJ with Wiki. Happy 30, Cooch! To Coochie Cooch! Love my people, man. That's so funny, dude. We just watched a few of those and giggled. I went out to dinner, and it was a sweet place. There's a cool place down the corner called Abbey Road Tavern, and they have a wicked freaking club sandwich, dude. Awesome club sandwich, and... Good entertainment. They had some cool people down there singing a few songs, dude. Just had a big time it was awesome man good birthday and doesn't feel any different you know I don't know I was kind of feeling weird about it last week but it's whatever dude time goes on I'll be all right might as well start digging the hole who cares bro we'll be all right thank you guys for tuning in 
before we get out of here. Uh, I mean, other than the sweaters and the t-shirts, I got a little Barnes & Noble gift card, baby. Ow, ow! 30 years old. That's what I get for freaking presents and actually fires me up, dude. Who would have thought that a Barnes & Noble gift card would get me all hot and bothered? But it does. And before we get out of here, I haven't done this in a while. One of my presents was a box of basketball cards. So I'm about to flip the camera around, turn the lights on, open this up. And honestly, dude, I told you I've had issues with the uh, bleaching the shirts. I've just wrenched my hands and feet into oblivion. It's just, I told somebody it just looks like I held fireworks in both of my hands and held my feet out in front of a musket while someone shot it. But anywho, you don't want to hear about my trials and tribulations. I'm about to put on some gloves opening these cards because I have like whatever, little lotion stuff on my hands and I don't want to gunk up the freaking cards. I don't want to explain it. <clears throat> Thank you for tuning in to episode, what is this, 66? That's pretty. That's how old I am. It's my, six, it's my 111th birthday. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Tremendous Opinions Podcast. I'm about to flip this around, open those up, and I'll be back with a vinyl soul searching here in a few days. Thank you, guys. See you next time. All right. <laughs> Let's see what we got. This is draft picks. I don't even know, dude. Who knows anymore? I don't have time to keep track of it. Ah, I actually like these. Sharif. Damian Lillard. Jason freaking Tatum purple. Ugh. Ugh. Buzz, your girlfriend, woof. Trey Murphy. Rajon Rondo. I actually like Rajon Rondo. Kevin Love. Davion Mitchell. Jason freaking Tatum. Give me a break. I saw Jason Tatum in Las Vegas. Looked like I could take him to the bucket. Another Davion Mitchell. Devin Booker. Greg Brown. And Devin Booker. Alright. What Whatevsky dude. Luca Garza, Bronze, Cat, oh, Wicked Yacht. Okay, I'll take that. Sharp, baby. Clay. McClung. Ooh. Ooh. Mm-mm. Tastes good. Nice. Russell Westbrook.
Moving on. Paul George. Andre Drummond. Primo! Primo! Oh! Wicked Yacht from North Texas, Javion Hamlet. Drop buckets, Javion. I'm rooting for you. All right, cool. Last card luck. Thank you guys for watching. I'm about to sleeve a couple of those up and I'm going to dispose of that JJ Reddick over there. But like I said, thank you guys for watching. Vinyl Soul Searching coming up in a couple days. I'll see you guys next week. Close.